It's been more than 50 years since an innovative report on education. The Coleman Report exposed a huge achievement gap between black and white students. Very little progress has been made since. According to the National Assessment of Education Progress, the achievement gap between black and white uh, 12th graders in math has only dropped from a standard deviation of 1.1 to 0.8 percent in the northeast and southern parts of the nation. It hasn't changed at all in the Midwest and dropped from a 1 to a 0 0.9 in the West since 1965. So what's the solution to the achievement gap problem? My next guest believe community schools, which focus on expanding learning opportunities, health and social supports and services, family and community engagement, plus early child development are the missing link. Uh, joining us uh, is Martin Blank, director of the Coalition of Community Schools. So Martin, when you say these community schools, the reality is we're seeing uh, in, in various communities, uh, population shifts. Uh, you know, in my neighborhood, Clinton Park in Houston, uh, the school there was built to serve anywhere from five to seven hundred. Because people began to move, it went down to about two, two fifty, and then got lower. They eventually closed that school down. Uh, and so, how do we deal with that when we have these shifting populations? Uh, good morning, Roland. Uh, this is a, a very real issue, but closing schools is not the answer to the achievement gap. Uh, when we close schools, we pull out critical anchor institutions from our most disinvested neighborhoods, neighborhoods that have been isolated, where people have been segregated for a long time. We need to keep those buildings open. We know that small schools work, particularly for vulnerable children, African-American and Latino children. And so we need to turn those schools into centers of community and bring together families and others to help our young people succeed. It's only going to happen when we come together and not expect educators alone to do the job of getting of closing the achievement gap. So define a community school versus a traditional public school. A, a community school serves as the hub of the community. Whether the school serves kids right in the neighborhood or brings together a, a group of young people, a community school t doesn't rely just on the teachers. It brings together faith-based institutions and community-based organizations and local government and other groups that have a stake in the success of our young people and says we are all in this together and we organize those resources and supports to help kids succeed. There was a brilliant story in the Washington Post a couple of weeks ago about Khalil Bridges in Baltimore uh, that your viewers should read. It's called Coming of Age in West Baltimore and it talks about a young black man who only through the efforts of, the, of his principal and the University of Maryland School of Social Work, which brought together a group of resources, including a number of mentors, African-American men from the community, who served as mentors to me young men like Khalil, whose mother is in a nursing home, who's been homeless, hungry, and facing all sorts of trauma, to help him get through school. And now he's able to graduate. They put up a GoFundMe site for him, which raised $40,000. And you know what Khalil did? Khalil said to the public, wait a minute, what about the, my brothers and sisters standing behind me? Don't just pick me as an isolated individual. Let's figure out a way to support all of my friends and, and, and uh, classmates in this community. So that's what we're trying to do, organize all of our communities. It does take a village uh, to raise our children in a, uh, in a society that is so fragmented. We have to come together to solve this problem. Real quick question from Jason Johnson. The biggest question that I have when you're talking about these community schools is how are they going to work with unions? Because one of the things that we have a lot of difficulty with is, you know, teachers unions, they want this school open, they want this school closed, they want this amount of power. Do you have a strong relationship with teacher unions? Do you think that they should be limited in their power? Because the unions are a key part in keeping we, schools functioning. We have a very school, strong relationship with our teacher unions. Randy Weingarten and uh, Lily Eskelson Garcia are both strong supporters of community schools. They believe that teachers Teachers need th that we need to create the conditions for learning for for students as well as for teachers. Right. And if teachers are faced with being uh, uh, police officers and mental health counselors and social workers and everything else, they can't do their job. So th the resources in our society, Jason, for dealing with those issues are not sitting in the school budget. Right. You know, we don't even have school nurses in every school in America. Yeah. People, people don't realize that. Yeah, but so we're trying to, you know, and the health system is pretty well funded in America if you look at the bottom lines on the profit gotcha. mar side. Uh, folks, uh, uh, first of all, uh, we certainly appreciate uh, all the work you're doing here. Uh, we will, of course, we cover education a lot uh, here on News 1 Now, and we'll keep uh, pushing this because I believe it is a fundamental issue facing African Americans. Thanks a lot.
You're welcome. Thank you. Jason, thanks a lot. Lauren, Lauren, Eugene, and Scott, I'll see you guys next time. Appreciate it, brother.